Okay, in this video we're going to be solving uh, inequalities. Okay, inequalities means uh, it's when you have x is less than something or y is greater than something, less than or equal to. So first off, I want to talk about the four different types of inequalities we have and the different ways we have of, of writing those inequalities. Okay, x is greater than 3. Is greater than. Notice that the big side of this, uh, of this uh, uh, symbol is on the side that is greater than. The smaller side of the symbol is on the side that is less than. Okay? So x is greater than 3, which can also be written 3 is less than x. Okay? It means the same thing. That's one way to write it. Another way to write it would be writing it on the number line. Okay? The number line here, 1, 2, 3. And what we would write is, we'd put a little circle around the 3, and then we would say, since it's going to be all the numbers that are bigger than 3, we would just shade in everything to the right of that 3. Okay? Not to the left of it, and we wouldn't fill in the dot there. Okay? There's another way to write the, the inequality as well, and that is to write it in what is called interval notation. Okay? And that is, you say x, and you do this little symbol here, which means it's an element of, or it's in the set of, okay? So x is in, and then you want to describe this set some, somewhere where you can find x. And what we're saying is, it's somewhere between 3 and infinity. So we just write 3, comma, infinity, like that. Remember, the infinity is a sideways 8. That's the symbol we use for it. Okay? Putting parentheses on either side. All right? Straightforward enough. So this is one way to write it. This is another way to write it. This is another way to write it. Okay? What if we have x is less than or equal to 2? Okay? Now this little line underneath here says it can be either less than 2 or it can also be equal to 2. And the way we write that on the number line, here, 1, 2, 3. This time we're going to put a circle around the 2. And since x is less than, that means we're going to shade the left side of that number line, or it can also be equal. So we also fill this in. So that means x can be 2, or 1, or 0, or anything negative, or it can also be 1.8, or 1.9, or 1.999999, or 2, just nothing greater than 2. Now, how do we write that using uh, interval notation? Well, again, we start with this x is in, what's the far left? Well, the far left is negative infinity. And what's the far right? It's 2, and it includes 2. So we say all the way up to 2, and since we want to say it includes 2, we put a little square bracket here. Okay? So over here in this example, we were not including 3. We didn't have the or equal to, we didn't fill in the dot, and we used a parenthesis here. When we wanted to include the endpoint, we said, or equal to, we shaded in the dot, and we put a square bracket instead of a parenthesis. Okay? So those are the three ways that we have of, uh, of describing, of notating uh, inequalities. Now, let's solve an equation. Okay? All right. Let's do the equation. Uh, how about 2 times x minus 8 is greater than 5x plus 17, okay? So, we want to solve this equation. We want to figure out what can x be to make this thing true. Well, if you've been solving equations, and you have, if you've been solving equations, you're looking at this and you already know the first step, and that is we're going to distribute this 2 here, okay? We're going to say, all right, this means 2x minus 2 times 8 is 16, is greater than 5x plus 17, okay? And now we're going to look at this and we're going to say, oh, there's a lot of x's up there, too many x's. We got 2x over here, we got 5x over there. Let's, uh, let's subtract 2x from either side, okay? Over here, the x's cancel out and I'm left with negative 16 is greater than 5x minus 2x is 3x plus 17. And you'll notice this is exactly like solving an equation, right? Now we're going to uh, subtract 17 from both sides. So I subtract 17 and I get negative 33 is greater than 3x 
So now I'm going to uh, divide everything by 3, and what I get is negative 11 is greater than x. Okay? Negative 11 is greater than x. Another way of writing this would be x is less than negative 11. So that's one way of writing my answer. Or I can also leave it that way. Uh, just because of personal preference, I usually put the, uh, the unknown on the left instead of on the right. Okay, now let's do the number line. How would we illustrate this on a number line? Uh, 10, 11, 12, and, uh, oops, I'm sorry. This is negative 12, negative 11, and negative 10. There we go. So x is less than negative 11. That means I'm going to draw a circle around it, and I'm not going to fill that in because there's no or equal to. Okay, and since it's less than, that means I am shading to the left. Okay, and now for interval notation, I would say that means x is somewhere between negative infinity and negative 11, not including either one. By the way, I think I might have glossed over this in the past, but I want to stress that you never put a square bracket around negative infinity or positive infinity because it's not really a number. It's just a concept of infinitely far, and you can't really include infinitely far. Okay? So that would be my answer. Now, is there a way that I, that I can check this? Well, one thing you can do is you can plug in the endpoint and see if, if this were an equation, would this work? Well, let's see. 11 minus 8 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So I get 6 on the left side. Uh, oop, whoa, I did that wrong. Negative 11. Negative 11 minus 8 is negative 19 times 2 is negative 38. So I get negative 38 on the left side. Got to be careful there. Okay. Uh, 5 times negative 11 gives me negative 55. Plus 17 is negative 38. So I get negative 38 on both sides, and, and I'm happy about my, uh, my end point. However, that's not actually in the solution set. The solution set is everything to the left of that. So that means I would need to select another point, uh, perhaps negative 12, for instance. Uh, plug that in. Negative 12 minus 8 is negative 20 times 2 is negative 40. Uh, negative 12 times 5 is negative 60. Plus 17 is negative 43. So is negative 40 greater than negative 43? Let me make it a little better graded than this. There we go. Uh, yes, it is. So yes, this works. Okay, it worked for my for my endpoint here. It worked for the border point, and it also works for a point in the solution set. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Okay. Let's do another example. Let's do the example of uh, negative 4 times x minus 2 is less than or equal to 18. Okay? Again, you treat this just like an equation. You say, all right, first thing I'm going to do is, well, I was about to distribute the negative 4. You don't have to distribute the negative 4. Uh, you could actually divide both sides by, uh, by negative 4 to start. Um, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative 4 just because I kind of like doing it that way. Uh, so negative 4 times x and negative 4 times negative 2. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8, so I say plus 8, less than or equal to 18. Now I'm going to subtract 8 on either side, and I get negative 4x, less than or equal to 10. Now I want to stop for a second, okay? Because I want to point out what happens when you... Uh, multiply or divide by a negative number. Let's take a true statement. For example, 3 is less than 7. Okay? I think we can all agree that 3 is less than 7. Uh, matter of fact, let's make it even more extreme. Let's say negative 2 is less than 7. Okay? Now let's multiply both sides of our inequality by a negative number. Let's say negative 10. So times negative 10 over here and times negative 10 over here. Negative 2 times negative 10 gets me negative 20. 7 times negative 10 gets me, I'm sorry. <laughs> let me pack up. We're multiplying by a negative number on either side, so let me write this right. Okay, it's times negative 10 and times negative 10. So negative 2 times negative 10 gets me positive 20. I want to make sure I do this right. And 7 times negative 10 gets me negative 70. 
Which one's bigger? 20 or negative 70? I think we can all agree that this one is bigger. And look what happened to the direction of the inequality when we multiplied times a negative number. We go from this side being less than to this side being less than, okay? So we went from writing less than to greater than. This happens every single time you multiply times a negative or when you divide by a negative, okay? Uh, we could also do the exact same thing uh, and say we're going to divide by negative 2 and divide by negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 gets you positive 1. 7 divided by negative 2 gets you negative 3.5. Which one's bigger? This, this side is bigger. Therefore, we went from writing less than to greater than. So what this tells you is a rule. And that rule is any time you have an inequality and your, because you can see what we're about to do, we're about to divide by negative 4. Any time you have a uh, an inequality and you multiply or divide by a negative, you change the direction of this inequality. So let's do that now. We're going to uh, divide by negative 4 on both sides. And uh, so that means over here we have x. This is going to turn into greater than or equal to. 10 divided by negative 4 is negative 2.5. And that's our answer. So now let's write it the three ways that we know how to write it. One is this way. One is, uh, I'll write negative 3, negative 2.5, negative 2. I'm going to put a circle around this. Do we fill in the circle? Yes, we do, because there's an or equal to there. So we fill that in. And what side are we shading it in? X is greater than. That means the bigger numbers. That means the numbers to the right. So this is shading in to the right. And from the number line, I always like doing the number line first because it makes the interval notation easier. Now I'm going to say x is somewhere between negative 2.5, and I'm including negative 2.5, so I put the square bracket, and infinity. So I put an infinity there, and like I said before, you can't include infinity. Okay? One more. Let's do one more. And then you're going to have this down. All right? Last example is 2 times x minus 2 is less than 2x plus 1. Okay? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, distribute that 2 real fast. Okay, let's do that. 2x minus 4 is less than 2x plus 1. Okay? Well, a lot of x is up there, so let's subtract 2x. And let's subtract 2x. And what we get is, well, the x's cancel out here. And we're left with negative 4. And, hey, the x's go away here also. And we're just left with 1. And we get negative 4 is less than 1. Now, we've seen that occasionally when we have equations, we end up with either something that's obviously true or something that's obviously false. And so sometimes we end up with, the, uh, uh, with no solution. And sometimes we end up with the situation where x can be any real number. And as we see here, we end up with a statement that says negative 4 is less than 1. And we say, mm-hmm, yes, it is. Negative 4 is less than 1. What this means is it doesn't matter what x is. It doesn't depend on what x is. Negative 4 is always less than 1. So this is always going to be less than this, no matter what x is. So that means x can be any real number. That's one way to write it in a, uh, uh, in a sentence. Another way to write it would be to say x is in the set of all real numbers. That r with the double uh, line there just means all real numbers. So x is just somewhere in there. Another way to write it would be to say x is somewhere between negative infinity and positive infinity which really doesn't narrow it down that much, okay? But that's the whole point, is to say it doesn't have to be narrowed down. It can be anything. Or, yet another way is to draw a number line. I'll just put negative 1, 0, 1, and say, where's x? It can be anywhere. Just shade in the whole dang line there, okay? Now, what would have happened if we had our inequality going the other way. What if we had started like this? And we ended up saying, 
negative 4 is greater than 1? Well, then we'd look at that and would say, no, no, it's not. It is not greater than 1. There's no way this can be true. X can't make it true. There is no X that will ever make this true. Well, then our answer is no solution. Okay? And we say X, put a little line through there, X cannot be found in the real numbers. There is no X that will make this work that can be found in the real numbers. On this one we would say, nope, not in there. And for our number line, we would have our number line here, and we wouldn't shade anything. We would just leave it blank and say, there are no X's that fit that description. Okay? So you can come up with a variety of different answers. You can either have X shaded to the left, you can have X shaded to the right on our number line, you can have the whole number line shaded in, you can have none of the number line shaded in, you can have a little dot that is filled in, which means it includes the endpoint, you can have a dot that's not filled in, which means it doesn't include the endpoint. Uh, lots of different uh, uh, possible answers for our inequalities here, but I think this gives you a good, uh, good way to start. All right.